All right, maybe we get started. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon for another Tesaki seminar series. Today we have Professor Kisuke Goda. He is a professor in the Department of Chemistry at the University of Tokyo, adjunct professor in the Institute of Technological Sciences at Wuhan University, and adjunct professor in the Department of Bioengineering at UCLA. He has received his Bachelor of Arts from UC Berkeley, summa cum laude, in 2001, and a PhD from MIT in 2007, both uh, in physics. At MIT, he worked on the development of gravitational wave detectors in the LIGO group, which led to the 2017 Nobel Prize in Physics. After several years of research on high-speed imaging and microfluidics at Caltech and UCLA, he joined the University of Tokyo as a professor. His research group focuses on the development and serendipity enabling technologies based on molecular imaging and spectroscopy together with microfluidics and computational analytics to push the frontier of science. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much for the introduction and also the invitation. Uh, let me share my screen. <clears throat> okay. So thank you. So I will talk about this uh, new type of imaging uh, technology called image activated cell sorting combined with uh, deep learning. Uh, so let me begin my talk by showing this uh, picture. Uh, this was taken uh, back in uh, 2013 at Terasaki Institute. Uh, uh, I think this was taken during an event uh, organized by uh, NDC, the uh, Nichibei Doctors Club. Uh, Nichibei stands for uh, in, uh, Jap uh, Japanese American uh, doctor. So basically, this was, um, this event was uh, held for sort of supporting uh, uh, Japanese doctors who are visiting uh, like, uh, uh, research institutes, uh, Kerasaki Institute, UCLA and USC from Japan. And uh, you know, Paul, Paul Terasaki used to uh, visit this event um, and then say hi to everyone. Uh, so I cherish my memory. <clears throat> uh, you know, you know, this uh, has been renovated, this background, yeah, significantly uh, recently. So my group, as Meme said, is focused on the development of serendipity enabling technologies uh, to realize Louis Pasteur statement, the chance of serendipity favors the prepared mind. So some of my group's uh, previous uh, accomplishments are uh, uh, shown here. And today I will talk about this uh, intelligent image activated cell disorder, uh, publishing cell, and also the related technologies. And please free to ask me questions anytime by raising hands or uh, directly asking me uh, questions. So today's topic is uh, cell analysis. So there are a lot of unmet needs in cell analysis. For example, how to identify unknown cells and their functions, how to isolate unique cells, how to increase microalgal biofuel production efficiency, how to produce many antibodies using cell, blah, blah, blah. And cell analysis is quite challenging uh, because it's somewhat analogous to what's a uh, worry problem. Uh, well, it's, it's called worry in, in the UK, and uh, I think it's, it's called Waldo in the US. Basically, the, the theme of the game is to find this worry or, <clears throat> uh, very quickly, find, uh, find worry very quickly with high accuracy. I think uh, when you are a kid, you used to play. Can you find water here? And you should be good at it because you do a cell analysis under the microscope. And it's here. And this is easy. I think this is one of the lowest levels uh, games. And, but uh, this becomes more, more and more complicated. And this, uh, I don't know how uh, the what level, but uh, it's a higher level, uh, or higher stage. And this situation is sort of analogous to uh, uh, biological cell analysis. You know, the easier cells are already found, and people are trying to find more difficult cells, and, and <clears throat> that's what's happening. 
and what is here. And the traditional way to find Wally, a Wally like cells is to use the optical microscope. And then once you find uh, uh, unique cells, you pick up cells under the microscope by, by picking. Okay? And here, this process is extremely time consuming, labor intensive, and inefficient. Even the automated microscope with the robotic arm is available nowadays, uh, which is available nowadays, is still very slow. Uh, the throughput is roughly uh, one cell per second. If you are very good at it, you can win a Nobel Prize. Perhaps this uh, Nobel laureate, Satoshi Omura, is uh, the best uh, war refiner. There's a modern technology or well, automated technology that can partially overcome this uh, problem. So, this, I think uh, I have seen the fax machine, the similar machine in when I visited the Terrasat Institute. Um, this fax machine uh, can uh, count, analyzes, and sort cell population based on uh, light scattering and fluorescence measurement. Basically, you start with the cell population and you mix it with uh, fluorescent labeled antibodies, and you flow these cells, uh, and then you uh, excite these cells with a laser, and then you measure uh, uh, scattering signals and fluorescent signals. And then those signals are used to activate the cell sorter to, to sort cells. And it, it works quite well, but it does not have spatial resolution. So it cannot identify and isolate cells based on spatial metrics. So there's a trade off between these two technologies. Uh, here, the microscope with a cell picker, which provides high content but low throughput, cannot find what well, can find worry but it will take a long time. On the other hand, the facts of fluorescence activated cell solar, which provides uh, low content but high throughput, uh, cannot find worry. Right? So there's a trade-off between these two uh, technologies. And if you show these two technologies in this figure of merit, um, it, it's kind of obvious. Here, the x-axis is the throughput, in, ton, uh, in units of cells per second to analyze and sort. And the y-axis is the cell information content. And the microscope with the cell picker is here. The fluorescence activated cell sorter is here. So there's a, a trade-off barrier here. So this blue region is sort of accessible area by conventional technologies. And if you place the specifications of these uh, uh, conventional technologies or commercial instruments, uh, they are basically are located in the yellow regions here, as you can see, which is kind of expected. But the war is here. Right? Uh, this is a sort of unexpected area where unknown cells, real cells, smart cells are. To find worry or worry like cells, we need more information to make the invisible visible. And also we need to eliminate enormous time and effort by making this process high throughput. So we need this worry finding tech. This is our goal. Basically we need the technology that provides both high throughput and both, uh, both high throughput and, and high information content. So, that's the technology that addresses this need. So intelligent image activity cell sort. So let me uh, uh, introduce this technology. And let me begin uh, the introduction by stating the, the history of the name. So basically the fluorescence activated cell sort that was uh, uh, developed almost 50 years ago. And from fluorescence to intensity measurement, from fluorescence intense measurement to imaging, so that's a conversion. So the fluorescence is replaced by image. And now be, uh, because imaging enables more sophisticated analysis, deep learning and uh, other kind of sophisticated uh, advanced uh, uh, computational methods can be used in real time on the uh, image activated cell solar. So it becomes intelligent, highly intelligent um, image activated cell solar. So that's why we call this uh, intelligent image activity cell so. And as Mehmet said, I was uh, 
working on the development of the LIGO detector. LIGO stands for Laser Interparameter Gravitation Wave Observatory, which received the Nobel Prize in 2017 for the detection of gravitational waves. And I used to work on the development of this huge uh, microson interferometers with four kilometer long arms uh, in two state, Louisiana and Washington. And luckily, um, the LIGO actually shares many aspects uh, of flow cytometry or the other way around, <clears throat> uh, such as optical engineering, complex machinery, interdisciplinary integration, and precision measurement. So I brought uh, the greatness of the LIGO technology to, to the field of flow cytometry to realize this intelligent image accuracy. Sorry. So this is a paper published in Cell. Uh, in 2018, so what, to, what I want to show you is this number of courses in the 51 courses and also the number of affiliations such as physics, chemistry, biology, computer science, blah, blah, blah. So as you can see, this is a pure accomplishment of interdisciplinary integration. Yeah, so, so this is the, the movie animated movie that shows how this technology works. So this is the box, and then this guy put uh, a, uh, a sample that contains the solution. And this is the microfluidic chip. Cells flow through, flow into this chip through this yellow tube. And initially the cells are uh, randomized but we use hydrodynamic focusing to create a single stream so that we can do imaging of single cells one by one. And here we do fluorescence imaging. I will get to the details of this imaging. And we use acoustic focuser to maintain the single stream. And the cells are flowing to capture cells with high sensitivity. We use a polygon scanner to cancel out the motion of the flow um, by rotating it in the opposite direction so that the acquired images, uh, acquired cell images are, are, are placed or integrated on the, on the faucet of the image sensor continuously without motion blur. And then images are acquired and, and, and sent to the image processor with, where we do uh, uh, image processing based on deep learning. <clears throat> And then using this uh, uh, convolutional neural network, we decide whether we sort or unsort uh, uh, cells. And then the decision signal is sent to the uh, uh, cell sorting module, where we kick or unkick those cells when the target cells come. And then eventually we uh, uh, collect two tubes that contain collected and uncollected uh, cell populations. So here's the uh, sort of recap of this uh, uh, the configuration, system configuration. So this is a microfluidic chip and the cells come in. It's a mixture of cells. And then uh, we use a hydrodynamic uh, cell focusing to create a single stream of cells. And then we use a high-speed imaging uh, technique to uh, capture uh, every single cell by imaging. And then the acquired images are sent to this uh, real-time intelligent image processor, which is composed of uh, many CPUs, uh, GPUs, and FPGAs. And then we do a lot of image analysis, image acquisition, uh, image construction, image analysis. And then finally, we uh, uh, make decisions uh, um, about whether we sold or unsold those cells and the decision signal sent back to the uh, microfluidic chip, which contains uh, this dual membrane push through cell solder. And here the key is that this chip, this, the distance between the optical in, uh, imaging part and cell solder part is uh, 33 millimeter. And the flow speed is one meter per second to maintain high throughput. So that means we only have like a 32 or 33 millisecond between imaging and sorting. Okay? <clears throat> so that's quite challenging. So this part corresponds to the recognition of the human brain. 
And this part corresponds to a decision making. And this part corresponds to commanding. And this part corresponds to actuation of the, of the human, uh, human action. So in a way, the whole thing is sort of close to, well, analogous to the microscope with a cell picture with, with a highly efficient uh, mechanism. So this is a, uh, the picture of the real setup. And this is a huge microhudic uh, and, and optical electronic uh, instrumentation. And this is a zoom in picture. And this is a microhudic chip we use to uh, sort of identify and sort cells. And cells come in here yeah, and flow from right to left. And this is what we do imaging. And this is what we do sorting. So this the distance between uh, the imaging and sorting is uh, 32 uh, millimeter. And it's again, the cell flow is at uh, one meter per second. So we only have 32 millisecond to decide. Let me tell you the details of uh, each component. So here's the uh, imaging technique we use called virtual freezing fluorescence imaging of Bifi. Uh, here, the cells are flowing again, you know, to, it is actually challenging to capture uh, image cells which are flowing at high speed. Again, the cells are flowing at one meter per second and fluorescence measurements are kind of weak, okay? fluorescence signals are weak. Um, so if you take pictures with a short integration time, you get low sensitivity, right? Um, although you can get the clear pictures. But if you try to increase the integration time, you get motion blur because the cells are flowing, right? So we have to somehow overcome this trade-off uh, between sensitivity and speed. And here we do a light seed uh, excitation. And then the cell images are formed without this polygon scanner on the CMOS camera, the cells are flowing like this. I mean, I said the cell images are flowing, but by uh, using this well-controlled polygon scanner, which is rotating in the opposite direction, so the images are formed on the uh, CMOS sensor, but in a frozen manner. So that this uh, technique virtually freezes the motion of flowing cells on the CMOS sensor to effectively achieve 1,000 times longer exposure time for sensitive blood-free process image acquisition. And this is critical for this uh, intelligent image activated cell zone. And this is a brain of the uh, intelligent image activated cell solar. It's kind of complicated. I'm not going to go into the details, but the key is this part. Basically, it's a composed of uh, uh, many CPUs, GPUs, uh, and controlled by the FPGA. And also, we use uh, all IP network. IP stands for Internet Protocol. So we use the same language to communicate between different modules to speed up the communication so that we can meet that 32 millisecond decision making requirement. And this is a microfluidic chip for cell focusing and imaging and sorting. So this is a three layer microfluidic chip, um, <clears throat> uh, glass, silicon glass uh, sandwich structure. And this is what we do uh, um, hydrodynamic focusing where we uh, uh, generate a single stream of cells. And then this is what we do imaging and then for about uh, 32 millimeter, we need to maintain a single uh, cell uh, stream. So we use acoustic focuser to maintain it. And then finally, at, at the cell sorting part, um, we have this uh, uh, two reservoirs with glass membranes. And on, on top of the glass membrane, we, are, we have a piezo electric actuators. So when the target cell comes, we push this uh, membrane and put the other membrane so that there's a 90 degree secondary flow to check the cell. And we can do this the other way around so that we can do this very quickly, left, right, left, left, right. So this, uh, the right images show the, the demonstration of sorting uh, of uh, cells flowing at very high speed. And this uh, these images or these figures uh, kind of show the performance uh, with frozen beads. 
to make sure that the, the computation can be done within 32 milliseconds. So under the classical image analysis algorithm, uh, data transferred image analysis uh, took all of the events took less than 32 milliseconds. So here the X axis, basically it's rank order function is basically the event. Event means a single cell, cell cluster or cell debris or, or something, whatever event we need, uh, detect. Y axis the processing time. So all the events took less than 32 milliseconds. Uh, with the convolutional neural network or deep learning, uh, which is computationally heavy, still 98.8% .8 of the events took less than 32 milliseconds. As a result, we achieved uh, the throughput of about 1,000 uh, cells per second, not 1,000 events per second. So, sorry. So this is the movie that shows the demonstration of this uh, technology. So this is the setup located at the University of Tokyo. And in the morning, we discuss what kind of experiments to do, and we prepare cells. And then this guy loads the sample of suspended cells, and we push the run button and wait for you know, 20, 30 minutes, depending on the experiment. And we monitor each process on a monitor during the sorting run. And finally, when the experiment is finished, we collect two tubes containing sorted and unsorted cells. And then uh, afterwards, we uh, put them under the microscope to verify uh, whether we have sorted the right species of cells. And also, we evaluate the sorting yield of purity. And as a result, we uh, discuss the sorting outcome. And also uh, we discuss what to do with the sorted cells. Some people want to use them for uh, further analysis, like sequencing, you know, DNA and RNA-seq, and also uh, uh, electron microscopy. And also uh, some, of the, some of them want to uh, use them for directed evolution. <clears throat> so this is a figure of merit. So, back to this and so for the first time we have achieved this uh, set of specifications by conquering this unknown area for the first time and by actually uh, uh, increasing or upgrading the specification the up microscope with the cell picker once at a time and then recently we have even pushed this limit further uh, and so we are here, basically, the couple of thousand cells per second with um, a decent image quality. So we want to go that way. Right? <clears throat> so many biologists uh, wonder how we can actually use this technology for applications. So let me show you some uh, interesting applications. So these are some of the, uh, the pictures or representative pictures of cells uh, captured by this intelligent image activated cell so, so we can use these images to, to, to activate the cell sorter and sort uh, these cells. Uh, Ugreen aggressive cells, but in E cells, T cells, uh, cancer cells, and, and platelets. So Ugreen aggressive cells is a model organism in algal research and that consumes CO2 to produce lipids. Actually, uh, uh, microalgae uh, actually consume 60% of CO2 on us. So it's very critical. And many companies like these, you know, in the US, Europe, and Japan are interested in uh, using microalgae to produce uh, uh, lipids and eventually by fuel. And here, the number, size, and the localization of lipid droplets in these cells are uh, an important biomarker for optimizing the efficiency of the lipid production. And then they want to do this. They want to do an image activated sorting of urine aggressive cells with unique and morphological and lipid droplet uh, distribution features so that they can do direct evolution to eventually produce highly efficient, highly productive uh, urine aggressive cells. So we are in collaboration with these companies. 
Another application is, is to food, food science uh, based on budding yeast cells. Uh, you know, yeast is extremely important. It's a model uh, organism uh, used in microbiology and food science, you know, such as wine and, and uh, uh, beer and sake. Uh, and there are uh, many strains, more than like 1,500 strains of body cells with unique morphological traits. And in fact, there's a strong correlation between the morphology of body cells and the taste of wine, beer, sake, and so on and so forth. And this, this is a kind of uh, example. So wine, this wine yeast, this beer yeast, sake yeast, and they look kind of similar, but actually they are different. Right? The, the, the differences are very uh, many. Uh, so it's very difficult to distinguish under the microscope, but we can do this. We can actually use these uh, differences to isolate uh, these, uh, say, wine yeast cells from the mixture of the yeast and sake yeast cells. And, and so the size and shape of budding cells are even biomarker for optimizing the efficiency of winemaking and brewing and baking. So we are actually in collaboration with a, a beer company to produce uh, sort of <clears throat> a new uh, beer uh, uh, product. Another application is uh, to cancer biology. And you know, CTC is uh, a kind of hot topic, maybe used to be a hot topic. So uh, in the 90% of cancer deaths are related to uh, uh, cancer spread. So the primary tumor sheds uh, so-called uh, circulating tumor cells, and they circulate in the body and move to a new location. And so the ability to visualize uh, the multiple characteristics of cancer cells, or CTC is extremely important because CTC is extremely rare. And to, to increase the accuracy and precision of CTC detection, we need multiple parameters. And conventional CTC detectors rely on like surface antigen or the mass or only one parameters. But imaging actually provides a lot of information such as cytoplasm, surface antigen, nucleus, and so forth, and or even the ability to cluster. Okay. So, and also the metastatic, metastatic power of CTC clusters is about 100 times higher than that of single CTC. So it's actually more important to uh, identify uh, uh, CTC clusters uh, from a mixture uh, of CTCs, blood cells, and CTC clusters. So by Using this technology, we can actually uh, identify and sort uh, specific types of CTC clusters from the large uh, population. Uh, in fact, we have done this. So these are so we uh, we can identify these like cancer, uh, CTC white blood cell clusters, single CTC, uh, CTC CTC cluster, uh, well CTC CTC doublet or CTC CTC triplet. Another application is to cancer immunotherapy. So CAR T cell therapy has been very hot nowadays. And, and basically we reprogram T cells collected from the human blood and then injected and then back into the human body. And we need to evaluate the uh, <clears throat> sort of the ability of the T cells, reprogrammed T cells before injection back into the body. One way to do it is to, to check the immunological synapse uh, like this. So the localization and intensity of the immunological synapse are important biomarker for understanding T cell activation, in particular the coordination and recognition and integration adaptive and innate uh, immune responses. And we actually use intelligent image activated cell disorder to identify the, uh, the, the, the power or the ability uh, of T cells and for evaluating cancer immunotherapy. And we're doing this with Cisnex right now. Another application is uh, to COVID-19 research. And, you know, purple rush, leg swelling, COVID-12, uh, brain uh, infarction. These are sort of uh, 
typical symptoms of COVID-19, and, and they are related to blood clots caused by unusual platelet aggregation. So for better understanding of uh, pathophysiology of COVID-19, it's critical to isolate these platelet aggregates from blood for detailed analysis. So these are the images captured by the intelligent image activist as well. And we have actually done this research recently and uh, discovered that there's a strong correlation between the concentration of cyclic clutch aggregates and the severity, mortality, gender, respiratory condition, and so on, of course. Um, so basically, we identify and saw platelet, platelet aggregates from, uh, from, the, from the blood of COVID-19 patients. And, and here, we, we actually analyzed the, the blood of 110 hospitalized patients at the University of Tokyo Hospital. And then we identify the uh, very interesting correlations. OK, what about the future? So after the publication of this paper, many people contacted me and, and, and told me that oh, they are interested in using this technology. So we started uh, make this technology publicly available so that they can come to the University of Tokyo and use it for uh, joint research. And this is a network of collab collaborations right now. It's not everywhere, but uh, currently more than 20 groups in the world use this system. I mean, at least before the pandemic, the pandemic has slowed down this international collaboration a little bit. But now we are sort of resuming. <clears throat> and because we couldn't handle all the requests so we started a company called Cybo. Cybo stands for uh, cell in, in Japanese. And Naonita is the CEO he, who used, he, he's one of the founders of the Sony's fax uh, uh, business. And then he uh, joined my group and then started this company. And we currently have two products, in Image Active Cell Soda and Ultrafast 3D Microscope. So you will be commercially available. We can't have a, a beta version of the technology. And recently, we have made it uh, level free, level free. So I'm not going to go to the details, but uh, we have made this image activated cell sorting technology uh, uh, level free of Raman image activated cell sorting. Uh, the, here, the source, optical source, is the Raman uh, source for stimulated Raman scattering. So just like a laser, we excite the molecular vibration in the cells and we directly measure them without the need for fluorescent labeling. And this level-free Raman image activated cell solar is quite useful for certain applications such as stem cell research or hematopoietic stem cell transplantation because we want to uh, make them level-free or, uh, uh, <clears throat> or less toxic before injecting into the human body. And these are some of the pictures. Uh, another direction is the so-called Rosetta Stone single cell biology. So the biology is somewhat analogous to this Rosetta Stone. Rosetta Stone is an Egyptian stone that describes something in three different languages. But actually, three different languages describe the same thing. And this situation is somewhat analogous to this bi biology. In biology, you know, we have flow cytometry at the population level, microscopy at cell level, and sequencing at gene level. So these regimes or these uh, different communities talk about the biology, same biology in three different languages, right? And you know, I, I, I was a physicist, I'm still a physicist. Uh, I'm interested in unifying things, the different uh, areas of biology. And by introducing this intelligent image activated cell sorting, I combined flow cytometry and microscopy. And eventually, I want to combine all of them to relate all those six so that we can make serendipitous discoveries coming from three different layers of information in biology. And you know, machine learning is actually composed of three different uh, techniques, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. And today I, I talked about this supervised learning. Basically, I, I told 
uh, indigent image activists as sort of how Wally looks like, right? Um, but we can do this by using unsupervised learning. So we don't have to tell Wally how, well, we, we can tell the intelligent image activists as sort of, uh, uh, <clears throat> we, we don't have to tell the intelligent image activists sort of how the Wally looks like, right? But still the, the machine can identify uh, uh, the Wally or Wally like cells. So this is interesting. Then we can use this machine to identify unknown species of cells. And this is just a, a sort of, uh, uh, list of references are related to this work. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge my group members and, and the funding agencies. So these people have made significant contributions to the development of this uh, um, intelligent image access. So thank you. And thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you for this uh, fantastic talk, Professor Goda. Really appreciate it. Um, as I wait for questions, um, the, the the cells in the body, um, you know, sometimes are floating, sometimes are you know suspended, sometimes attached to surface. Do you do pre-processing? Let's say you want to analyze hepatocytes from liver. Do you do different, you know, the the dissolution of cells or just these suspended cells? So, uh, so the the condition or the preparation is pretty much similar to facts. So as long as you can uh, use fax machines for your particular application, of course, the type of species really depends on the application. And it, as long as you can use fax machines, we can use this, or you can use this IHGS, intelligent image activated cell solar machine. So the same protocol, the same preparation applied to those cells of interest. Thank you. Um, thank you for your great talk. Last few years, they've seen a surge of interest in single cell analysis using omics data. Have you mm -hmm. used or are you planning to use this technology for such single cell analysis applications? Yes, that's what we are currently doing, yeah. Uh, many people are in fact interested in uh, identifying the, the genotype-phenotype relation, especially morphological phenotype and the genotype relation. So once we isolate, uh, unique cells with unique morphological features, and we do sequencing, and then uh, relate that information with the phenotype. Then eventually, once the, the correlation is found, we don't have to do sequencing anymore. We, we can do morphological analysis to identify the genes. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Right now. Or we're actually uh, looking for looking forward to collaborating with new collaborators. So if you have great ideas, we are, we are, we'll be happy to consider a potential uh, in a partnership. I see. Thank you. Um, another question is this uh, CTC is similar to Wally, needle in a hay haystack, one in a billion or maybe less. Mm -hmm. Are there any ideas to, because they said you can detect CTCs on stage four. So, or stage mm -hmm. three, which is too late. Do you That's have right. any ideas where we can, you know, detect CTCs on stage one or two? Uh, yes and no. Well, that's something we are doing right now. And we think that the, the, the probability of finding CTC clusters is, is sort of proportional to the uh, uh, cancer stage. So, yeah, that's why we are trying to find CTC clusters more. Then we can use that information to sort of identify this, the different stages of cancer. Thank you. Um, another question is you mentioned that a lot of uh, very high tech uh, technologies, electronics, optics, microfluidics. Um, where do you see that we can, which aspect can be improved? And then which aspect are you working on? Also machine learning, you mentioned. Yes, uh, that's a good, a good question. So here again, it's a configuration. Uh, imaging is good. Uh, Microfluidics is also pretty much mature, but the digital technology is evolving very rapidly. 
So which is good. And uh, we actually not really developing the digital and, and software technology because the uh, Silicon Valley or you know that smartphone technology is uh, the strong driving force to improve it. So we are actually in, in importing uh, or adopting some of the latest technology to speed up the computation uh, on the uh, real-time integer image processor. So this technology keeps improving significantly, not just by us, but driven by the, the smartphone technology, so which, is, which is good. Thank you. And compared to the label-free versus the, the ones with labels, which one do you think would be the winner at the end? Eventually, people want to get rid of labeling right, or labels uh, because it's a time-consuming process. And also nowadays, it's quite expensive. And you know, it's kind of hard to obtain reagents now because of this you know, Ukraine war and stuff. So yeah, we, uh, eventually, the label-free technology will win. But the level for technology is still limited compared with the you know, fluorescence-based techniques um, because uh, the sensitivity is still lower. But I think the technology will eventually overcome that difficulty. Excellent. Excellent. Well, that's all the questions I have, uh, Dr. Uh, Goda. Appreciate your time and the Thank great you. Uh, seminar. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope to see you again.